here is a uh, an Elizabeth Warren like organizer absolutely cumstering Ben Shapibo, making him shake in his little boots, little size you know, four and a half booties. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. You have to watch it. Two minutes, all of Ben Shapiro's anti-woke tirades are just destroyed. Imagine getting owned by an Elizabeth Warren student organizer. Lamau is what I said. So let's take a look. I mean, this is really good. This is really, really good. Only because Ben is like super flustered in it. And I love that. I love when Ben gets super flustered. It's, it just makes me happy. You know what I mean? I know much about you. So I have a series of back and forth questions, if that's okay. Just before I ask my question. How did Ben get owned? Mike from PA just thought it was a meaningless back and forth. It was. But that such is the nature of debates. So as long as you fluster your opponent, that's it. Put him on the back foot is, is, a, is a wrap. He's basically stating like wokeism is just something that conservatives have created and cultivated. And I've only heard about it being described in the way that it's been described by conservatives. So are your, do you come from Holocaust survivors or are you a Jewish family that didn't? Uh, so my great, great grandparents arrived here. A lot of our extended family was killed in the Holocaust, but, but our army. Your family, great, great grandparents. Do you have yeah. friends whose grandparents were Holocaust survivors or anything like that? Of course, that? many of them. Yeah, I've written, I've, I've helped, uh, I've helped write memoirs of Holocaust survivors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Their families are kind of messed up, right? My family is very messed up. I mean, if you they, go through they a teach, trauma like the Holocaust, they, I would imagine. They teach that. that trauma between generations. You know what I mean? Trauma very often in a lot of circumstances is passed down. I mean, I know some kids of Holocaust survivors who are now fantastic and some who didn't. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So okay. you are officially woke that is what wokeness is about it's like uh you know people's grandparents or their great-grandparents were slaves well, that's okay no that's no, okay guys i i actually want to hear no, no, i want i want to hear no, this it's okay it's okay i want i want to i want to hear the let's at least hear the argument let's okay so let's let's hear it let's hear it go what he wants to hear me. i do want to hear it it's fine let he him go to let, let's hear it I'll just, you know, so I'm ex talking. explain Come how on. that's woke so, I mean, the whole thing is, is like, so during Silent Cal, Calvin Coolidge's administration, do you know about like the great Mississippi flood back in the 1930s? I understand that American history is filled with racial evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that causes some intergenerational trauma, which affects people's ability to be, you okay, know, so let me, effective let me, okay. and things like that. Fine. So let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, so if the idea that history has consequences, of course that's true. That's not yeah, wokeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not wokeness. What wokeness suggests is that fundamental institutions in American society no, are so... No, it doesn't. Yes, I, it 100% I ran, does. I ran Elizabeth Warren's campaign. I helped organize her volunteers around here. Okay, to be fair, like, I, I it's, you know... I would laugh at that too. Is fucking Elizabeth Warren. But anyway, listen, you know, this is a well-intentioned guy. Okay, so let's let's give him the time of day. I am I am a representative of wokeness. Okay. Well, and that's just I mean, this is all it is. Well, I mean, like I mean, I I you know, I hope I, that By the way, I think this kid is doing a pretty good job of describing intergenerational trauma and systemic oppression to Ben Shibibo, by using something that Ben Shibibo talks about and cares about, some, a concept that he not only understands, but advocates for, intergenerational trauma for Jews as a consequence of systemic oppression that they face and continue to face, like remnants of uh, such uh, oppression. So he's doing a good job. Like, this is a perfect fucking way to craft an argument for someone like Ben Shibibo by making an adequate comparison between black people and the systemic abuse that they withstood in the United States of America and how our systems were designed in a way to oppress black people and the outcomes of said uh, oppression and the intergenerational trauma in a way that Ben understands. So that's actually a really good way to fucking debate Lord a debate pervert, okay? At my first tattoo, I, I, the guy I, I, had lightning bolts and 88s tattooed on his neck. And as a Jewish person, um, that's really messed up. It's, so it's basically a threat. There are, there are racist people now he's trying to describe that like Ben should in a way that Ben can understand seeing remnants of that same kind of, uh, uh, you know, power struggle uh, from the side of the oppressor in contemporary society is going to very clearly create an environment of hostility. Now, the overarching argument here is most likely going to be around why certain imagery in college campuses invoke feelings, especially when uh, the unrecognized trauma or the systemic abuse is continuing, okay? Like, there's a difference between, like, uh, you know, that's why you don't want to invite Nazis to a college campus, because when you invite a Nazi to a college campus, all of a sudden, that leads to a less safe space for all of the victims, the marginalized communities. It's not just about the fifis, okay, of 
uh, Jewish people or uh, fucking, you know, trans people or black people or people just that do not fit the in-group that the Nazis are supposedly trying to defend. But it's more so the legitimate hostility in that environment when you legitimize the point of view and the perspective of a neo-Nazi by inviting them over to your college campus. Let's continue. People ...who exist. The argument that you're making, and I'm going to close with this because this is going in weird directions and I don't really no, want to... No, no, no. It's going in a weird direction. He's getting owned by, you know, a, a soft-spoken Warrenite, okay? A Radlib, if you will. Well, it's not I, I don't, I don't really direction. want to get, no, just hold this up a is, second. I let, I let you get out your arguments, and now, now it's time for me to respond, because I let you say Okay, I'll let you respond, but... No, I no, no, think, not but. Now's my turn. You, you are not characterizing but, what I'm saying accurately. Now, now, it's, now it's my turn. Your, your, yeah. your definition is inaccurate. The reason your definition is inaccurate is because any sentient human being would acknowledge that history has consequences. Right. But if the idea is, but that's not what wokeism is. Wokeism is a different thing. Wokeism suggests that all inequalities of today are attributable to not only historic injustices, but also continuing injustices in the now. And I've that all just- I love, wait, first of all, Ben, Ben turns around and says, I'm actually gonna redefine what you're stating by basically saying the exact same thing, okay? And so if you're going to rewrite the definition of a concept that you yourself came up with anyway, cause like no one's like, I'm a wokest, you know what I mean? That's not a real thing. Why not just like make it look dumber? You literally just said, Every, every human being with a brain cell believes that systemic issues or uh, historic uh, precedents have consequences, you know? Historic precedents and like things that happen throughout history, of course, have consequences on human beings and the way that they live on a daily, uh, on a daily basis. But wokeism is something different. It's when historic things have consequences on people that are living in the past and also people that are living in the present. That's different. It's like, well, no, you just, you just basically repeated the thing that you prior, you previously agreed on. Very strange. You could have done a better fucking, you could have crafted a better, like, weaker argument. If you're gonna straw man your opponent, don't fucking, you know, don't go off and, like, uh, admit that there is, uh, the argument is exactly the same. And I've that all disparity is attributable to discrimination. Like that, but a conservative. Not just that. Not just a conservative that. is the not only just, person. Not just, and I want to know why. Why is it that conservatives... I guess he's trying to make it seem like all matter, like a black person stubs their toe... And that's because of racism. Like, I think he's trying to, the straw manning on that part is like all matter of discrimination, all forms of discrimination actually comes from a, a prior historical context. I think that's what he's like trying to bastardize it into. He didn't do a really good job of describing that. He, he wasn't able to get that fucking straw man off. You know, um, for example, if a black person stubs their toe on a Lego, um, that's, that's racism. That's not racism, actually. O okay, well, yeah, that's not, no one made that argument. That's not a thing, you know what I mean? Which, by the way, in and of itself, for all the debate perverts in here, uh, you guys know me as the guy who's uh, incapable of debating and refuses to because he, he can't face the truth, but, like, you know, that's a logical fallacy. Um, what Ben Shapiro is doing, he strawmanned, and then he, uh, engaged with the strawman by, uh, pushing it to its logical extreme, that no other sane person would actually make an argument around. So the only people who define it like that. Why, Why are conservatives? And I think that uh, our boy here did a pretty good job of stopping Ben in his tracks and saying, that's not true. Only conservatives are the ones who describe wokeism like that. The yeah, okay. only okay. people- Okay, okay, so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to stop here because this is going nowhere. But What's up? I, I, we're, I'm gonna have to stop with this with you because this is going nowhere. All I'm well, going to say is this. So, no, so <coughs> <clears throat> it's not going nowhere. When you're not talking to a uh, college freshman that is flustered for being in front of a massive fucking audience for the first time ever with your pre-canned speech and your talking points that you have pre-established and honed for the past fucking 20 years that you've been doing this, that you got from the Heritage Foundation, you have to run away. And that's precisely what Ben is doing here. Mr. Freedom of Speech. Mr. Uh, I, I think all speech should, uh, especially frustrating speech, should be allowed on college campuses is straight up utilizing his position of authority in this circumstance to silence opposing speech because he could not do it. He could not deal with it. But let's see I, what I, I just am trying I, to understand I your perspective. On it. Just Boo. One he says, I'm just trying to see your perspective. And immediately the crowd starts booing. It seems as though Ben is on the back foot here. And for some reason, the crowd is not responding in a way where they would, uh, I don't know, side with who the intellectual giant is here. Because obviously, debate perverts love Ben Shapiro because he puts people on the back foot. Ben owns people in the free marketplace of ideas, right? That's why people love him. That's why he's the intellectual giant, the gladiator of the right in the marketplace of ideas. And yet here, 
his debate opponent is doing the same thing that that Ben does to other people and causing Ben to be flustered. And yet his audience is not reacting in a way that they normally would. They're not turning around and making compilation videos about this guy saying like he fucking owned him. They're not turning around and going, maybe Ben isn't all that right in this circumstance. And that's precisely why I always say debates are for, debates are pseudo intellectual wrestling, uh, WWE. I disagree. Your perspective. On it. Is this? Look, but, what's up? I, I, well, I'm gonna have to stop with this with you because this is going nowhere. All I'm going to say is this. So no, some, I, I, I just am trying I, to understand I your perspective. On it. Just one more second. On a, it's, on you a, say on a, on a fundamental on a fundamental a, level, you're shifting definitions to avoid the consequences correct? of your. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Someone ran in and literally put their fucking hand physically on the microphone. They were so scary for this crowd of young conservatives to hear. They thought, "Wow, we can't have this person." We cannot have this person converse in this setting no longer. I mean, the things that he's saying, they are too hard to hear. Correct. Of your own argument. And if the idea is... And now they're debating the efficacy of debates all of a sudden, or whether or not this debate is happening. Look, look how quickly Ben Shapiro went back into a corner in the most Weasley fucking way he can, shifts the conversation to, well, you're actually not following the sanctity of, of uh, the, the pre-established debate confines that we have created. You are, not an, you are not an interlocutor that I would like to see no longer, sir. That's what he's doing, because he's fucking Weasley, and he's weaseling his little fucking way out of that conversation because he has nothing else to say. He's flustered, he's on the fucking back foot, he's backpedaling. And this kind of shit does make me really happy. I'm going to be honest. I, as much as I hate debate perverts, I personally love watching a debate pervert like this get demolished. Uh, you know, inconsequential. It's not actually uh, productive. No one in that room is going to ever second guess Ben Shapiro's takes or anything like that. But, uh, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's good because it demoralized Ben. And I like that. It makes me happy because I'm fucking driven by spite, just like conservatives are. And, fi and, and final point. Speech. And final this point. Is being and final point. If I you are going you to hold on. If you are also. Also, just final point to sum up there. Wow, a group of young Americans, young Americans, you know, youngest person in that crowd being like 55. Uh, are celebrating the fact that someone was swiftly removed for the crime. And I mean the crime, the criminal act of trying to have a conversation with Ben Shapiro. Perhaps conservatives don't care about free speech after all. My oh my, I am shocked. Let me tell you how shocking this is. Oh my lord.